Hey everybody, it's Jonathan. We're gonna try this out. New technology, new stuff. Was really excited to try it, so I thought I'd try like one more, um, I'd do one more Facebook Live this week and see how it goes. So if you're in, uh, do me a favor. You can uh, leave a comment. It would be great. I want to see how this works. So just even just a little high in the in the comment uh, box would be great. Uh, really excited to kind of see everybody. Uh, join today. So I hope everybody enjoyed yesterday's uh, Facebook Lives like we do every week at uh, Wednesday at 1.30 Eastern. Um, I may start doing more of these because I'm really excited about this uh, this new technology we're using. And uh, and so if you would, wherever you are, if you'd share this with other goalies or parents or coaches, that would be uh, that would be really cool too. So um, yeah, let me know where you are in the world. Just, uh, just put that in the comment box as well. So um, for Everybody who's joining me today, I thought we'd do a kind of a cool, uh, a cool thing. So, um, for those of you that you may or may not be a football fan, but uh, big news in the football world was Tom Brady left the New England Patriots, and uh, and one of the one of the reasons uh, that kind of has come about uh, as to why he left was basically a lack of you know, a lack of love from the Patriots. Right. And, uh, and over the years as I've coached athletes, not just in lacrosse, but in a lot of other sports, all the way from the Olympic level and the pro level on down. Um, there's always a, there's always a bit of a disconnect sometimes between athletes and coaches. Uh, there's times when athletes don't like their, don't like their, their coach for whatever reason. Uh, and, and the coach needs to be, uh, you know, they wish the coach was a little bit more um, this or more that. And really, it all comes down to love languages. And so I want to I wanted to talk about this today because because even at the pro level, like right, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, New England Patriots, six Super Bowls, all this stuff. Could it possibly be that a disconnect between an athlete and a coach came down to love, right? <laughs> so uh, so there's a great what I wanted to uh, share with you all today is that um is that there's a a book uh, that um, uh, by a guy named Doc, uh, Gary Chapman, and it's a book called The Five Love Languages. And I read this book about 20 years ago. And this is not just a sports book. This is, in fact, this is just a, a this is a relationship book. And and I recommend this book to anyone and everyone who has a uh, uh, who has who's in any sort of relationship, whether it's coach athlete, uh, you know, athlete parent, parent coach, parent parent, uh, you name it, it's uh, it's beneficial. So for, by all means, so so what I'd love for you to do is is check out that book. But what I wanted to do today was go over um, uh, was go over some of what these five love love, lang love languages are. All right, and so the first love language is words of affirmation. So words of affirmation are basically, you know, hey, you did a great job, right? Um, you know, this uh, this can be as simple as like being in your house, you know, doing the dishes and having someone tell you like, hey, you did a great job doing the dishes today. Uh, and uh, but sometimes as athletes, you know, we're really looking for praise from our coaches. Not every athlete; these are just athletes where this is their primary like love language. They want to hear those words of encouragement from the coach and those words of um, those words of like, "Hey, you're doing a great job." Um, I want you to. Uh, I want you to be aware of this with your athlete to see like, well, what are they getting from their coach? Are they getting enough of that? Because the key here as we, as we go through this is that your coach may have one love language and your athlete may have a different one. Okay. Um, Daniel Guzman, love it. Right. Uh, you know, one of the things here to, that, that the, when I first saw, uh, Gary Chapman speak, and this was ages ago, he talked about how he had a number of kids and that the, I think he just had two, but the love language was different for each of his kids. So if he went to each one and spoke in just his love language, he, he was met with, uh, it was a bit of a disconnect between him and his his him and his kids, right? So so this can happen for sports teams as well. And, and you know, coaches always talk about, you know, how they, they need to find out how to motivate each one of their uh, each one of their athletes and because it can be differently, it can be different. And that's true. But I think if we take it a step further, it's not about finding the words to motivate that athlete. It's the finding the words to connect with that athlete. 
All right. And that's really, that's really important to understand. So, um, so the first one, as I mentioned, is words of affirmation. Okay. The, the second one is acts of service. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of coaches, I feel, will hold back their love of an athlete based on their that level's active service, right? I know for me, when I'm amongst the team, I want guys who are willing to go out and, and play hard and work hard and put in an effort. That is a form of active service, right? So if you're coach is standing there on the sideline and getting really frustrated with the players because he thinks the players aren't really putting in enough. That's an act of service, right? And so this is where um, on the coach perspective, they're looking for the athletes to kind of chip in. But from the athlete side, how could a coach be providing like an act of service? This usually falls into the category of playing time, in my opinion. It's like if your athlete isn't getting playing time, that is really an act of service from the coach. The coach is allowing the, the player to get on the field. So the more I think about active service in terms of coach athlete is, uh, you know, it, it can be a little bit twisty here. But like, think about what you do at home. An active service is this. If you're the parent, what's an active service? An active service might be taking out the trash or doing the dishes or feeding the dog or the cat or whatever, um, or cleaning your room or doing your laundry. Those are all acts of service. But when it comes to playing, it's a little bit different to, to see like, well, how how is your athlete really uh, communicating with the coach and how is communicate, yeah, communi coach communicating back if if the um, the re the relationship there is not necessarily uh, the communication level is not active service. Sorry, I got a little distracted here with this new software. I've got like all these things coming in my screen that you guys can't see, but I can see behind the scenes. It's a little tough to manage, so I apologize for losing my train of thought there. Um, the fifth, uh, the number three of the five love languages is receiving gifts, and um. And so with receiving gifts, one of the things to, uh, this is a tough one in terms of sports. The way I look at this language, receiving gifts is, would be like, receive, this can almost be words of affirmation as well, but it could be a trophy. It could be a medal. It could be an award that is done at the end of the year or the end of the each week, you know, player of the week sort of thing. Those can be, uh, those could be could be qualified as gifts, I think, in this in this um, uh, in this format, right? In this love language, you know, what else do you think could be a, a, a receiving of a gift for an athlete from a coach? Um, it could be, you know, it, it could be everything like I was thinking of like orange wedges at halftime, you know, or a little bit of a gift, right? In terms of um, in terms of a, a, a language for an, an athlete. Uh, but so you can kind of take this a little bit, um, however, however way you want it. But receiving gifts is the um, is the third uh, is the third love language. Okay. The fourth love language is quality time, and to me, what's really interesting about quality time when you think about athletes who need quality time. And they're looking to get that from their coach or from their teammates. A lot of times coaches are just maxed out and they can't give that time, right? They've got all these other athletes to deal with. Your athlete may be at home from you and, and getting quality time with you. And that may be their love language. But now they go looking out in the world and now they're with a coach and that coach can't give them that time, that individual time. Uh, that can be a disconnect. Back to kind of the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick analogy, you know, I heard a quote from another Patriots player, Julian Edelman, who said that in 10 years of playing with the Patriots, he had only had like four conversations with Bill Belichick, right? Now, I understand this is professional sport. Like it's, it, it, it's the same thing. If an athlete is looking to have like quality time from that person who are they are giving their time and energy to, which is their coach, and that coach isn't reciprocating in their love language, right? Then there's going to be a big disconnect there, and there's going to be tension. 
you know, I had one of my college athletes this year uh, had a situation with uh, their coach. They were a freshman uh, playing Division One, and there was no relationship with the coach. Well, every other op- every other situation that came um, on the field of play on the practice field. Uh, if there's any tension, that tension was only exacerbated because there was no love language between them and the coach. The coach was very distant. This is the reports we hear of, about a guy named Bill Belichick, about Coach Belichick, is that he is also very distant. He is very professional. So you can imagine what his love languages might be versus that of his athletes and how it might create some tension. All right. Really important to understand. Right. The the final, the fifth, the final love language, language number five, is physical touch. Now, this is kind of fascinating to me in the world of sports because over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of issues with coaches who have just been weird, right? From, from everything from the Penn State issue to Larry Nasser and all this basically abusive athletes. Uh, that has basically created a void, a physical touch void between coaches and athletes. Everything from high fives to hugs to slaps in the butt, you know, things like punches in the arm, like you got this, that has all been reframed. What's troubling about that though, is that if your athlete, if their main love language is physical touch, then like, you know, they got a hug from mom or dad when they were young, when they did a good job or they felt sad or something was troubling. Now, again, they're in this relationship where they're working really hard every day for this coach and vice versa. Well, you know, if the coach's love language is physical touch and they can't give that anymore because we're all freaked out about, you know, physical touch and child and, and abuse and things like that. But now we have got coronavirus uh, and that's creating more distance there. That's creating a lot of tension. All right. So it's just something to really kind of consider that, you know, if your athlete's love language is physical touch, then this could be a bit of a problem, right? Uh, what I think is really important to understand through all of this is, is when you look at the at all of your relationships and all of your athletes' relationships, you know, we we don't typically think of like love in that sense, but really, love is a, is a form of it's a form of communication. It's a level of communication, and and everybody has their own way that they show their love to somebody else. Now we have intimate relationships, obviously, but we also have then coach athlete relationship, which can be very personal, right? Because a coach, I believe coaches are the front line of mental health in this, in this, in our, in North America and in the world, because primarily coaches are working with athletes in an environment where the athlete is typically excited to be there, right? They're, they're looking forward to being at practice. Uh, for the most part, right? Or they have been all the way up until now. Now they have a, maybe a new relationship with a new coach, and that coach is going to show their love language in their way, right? So if you think of Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, what we're hearing is is Tom Brady really wanted to hear words of affirmation, but that was not the love language of his coach or that of the uh or that of the the organization. Although I find that hard to believe because you know Robert Kraft would share the the owner of the Patriots would share how he loved Tom like a son, but that was not the 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 word of affirmation that Tom needed to hear. What he really needed to hear from his coach, even with all of his praise and all of his accolades, was like, "You're doing a fantastic job. You're the best quarterback ever." But for the coach's perspective, that's not his love language. So you can see the disconnect there, even at the pro level, even at the at the pinnacle of sport with the greatest athlete, one of the greatest athletes of all time, um, and one of the greatest coaches of all time. You can see this disconnect. Bill Belichick's love language was acts of service, right? So as long as his players are providing the service that he needs, then he that's he's feeling loved, like he's feeling good, but. For the athletes, their language can be completely different. And so you take this to your athlete and whichever coach they're dealing with now, whether it's their junior high school coach, 
and he's like the big bear hug guy, you know, he's more physical than most. If that's not your athlete's love language, then that's going to feel a little weird, right? But if your athlete is looking for uh, some other language, then you, you've got to help your athlete understand, like, listen, you know, this coach, you know, isn't giving you, um, isn't giving you the, um, the, 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 the language, the, the love language that you're looking for. Right. But when you tell it to like a kid who's like U10, U14, U16, that might feel really weird to them. So I highly recommend, I highly recommend reading the book. Okay. The book by Gary Chapman. I'll, I'll put the link, uh, put the, the title up here. It's called the five love languages by Gary Chapman. And so don't get freaked out by the word love. In, I would replace the word love with communication, right? So the communication language of your coach, of your athlete, of you as a parent with your, between you and your kids or between you and your spouse, like it's, it, it's an incredible book. It was really eye opening to me when I read it like ages ago. But then when I started, as I work with more and more athletes and I see these disconnects that athletes have with their coaches, it really comes down to these five love languages. So we've got words of affirmation, We've got acts of service. We've got receiving gifts. We've got quality time and we've got physical touch. Those are the five love languages. So finding a common ground between your athlete and your coach, your coach, your athlete, uh, and, and, or you and the coach, whatever, uh, is really, really important. It's going to help understand, help you understand why there might be more of a disconnect there than there needs to be. Uh, when in fact, you know, there doesn't have to be. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So listen, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, uh, I wanted to kind of use this software today. Let me know if you like, leave me a comment. If you like the software, um, if you, you know, to, let me know where you saw this, cause this is streaming right now live to YouTube and Facebook in a number of places. And so, um, I hope that, um, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you like it, leave me a comment. I'll do more of them. And, uh, you can always leave me, a. um, uh, leave me a comment here as well. All right. Or send me an email, coach Edwards at lacrosse So thanks for joining everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, again, like, let me know what you think. Share this with somebody who needs to hear it. You know, a parent, a coach, uh, another athlete, like if your athlete's struggling with the relationship they have with their coach, you know, maybe you probably can, you know, looking at one of these, uh, these love languages, um, you can probably figure out where the disconnect is, um, and, uh, and why it's happening and maybe how to fix it. Okay. So, um, by all means, thanks for watching everybody. Have a great week. Uh, enjoy the coronavirus, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Bye.